Did you know a quarter of the planet at some point in their lives will deal with chronic low back pain? Usually that's because of a degenerative condition in the back, poor posture, degeneration of your discs, a fall or an accident that causes some break of the bones, and ultimately a lot of people wind up being proposed what I was proposed, which is spinal fusion surgery. This is how doctors fix broken backs. What is spinal fusion? They take portions of your back, typically the bones, sometimes two, three, or even more vertebra, and they affix them together using titanium hardware and promote permanent growth as one big joined bone or a mega bone. There's some problems with that and I'm here to talk about it. Why might spinal fusion be used? The degeneration of discs occurs naturally throughout a human life. It really comes down to the fact that we're sort of sitting and standing a lot and we're putting a lot of force on those intervertebral discs which separate our vertebra. And as we age, those become smaller and smaller, they begin to shrink, and that causes pain around the nerves as they exit the spinal column. And so that is one of the most common reasons why the surgery is performed. They go in, they actually remove your old disc, which is kind of gross, and they put an artificial spacer there before they then fuse your bones together and create a mega bone. But in the past decade, we've seen increases of spinal fusion in the general population as much as a third, and the costs keep going up. If you have insurance, this is generally covered. If you don't, you're looking at quarter of a million, if not more, to pay for this type of surgery. That's not cheap. Here's the problem with mega bone surgery as I see it. Number one, it's a pretty major surgery. There's open procedures, which are the old ones. There's minimally invasive procedures, but most of them have similar risks. You're cutting into a very delicate portion of the body, which means no matter what, you're having to do some damage to connective tissue, to muscles, and that's gonna take time to heal. Minimally invasive is better at eliminating some of those risks, but it doesn't eliminate the major ones, which are the risk of nerve damage. Anytime you're invading around the spine, there's a significant risk that any of the doctors or surgeons who are performing on you might cause damage to those nerves, and sometimes that damage can be very long-lasting or even permanent. It's phenomena like foot drop, where suddenly you have limited mobility in one or both of your feet. Uh, an interesting one that's relevant for people who are born with penises called retrograde ejaculation, which essentially means that if you're planning to have a child prior to surgery, you need to go to a sperm bank first because you may permanently lose that capability of your body. In addition to the risk of nerve damage, you've got the risk of infection, you've got the risk of anesthesia, you've got a very long recovery process. The scariest thing about this to me is that for many people who receive spinal fusion, the symptoms don't go away. And in some cases, they can become even worse. After the fusion was done, Almost immediately I was in far worse pain than I was in prior to the surgery. I, uh, uh, I was suffering a lot. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand. And actually, it's not even a secret anymore that a large number of people that receive spinal fusion surgery are actually unable to see a fusion of those bones, which means that fundamentally the surgery has failed because their bones did not fuse where the surgery was performed. But even if you have a wonderful, perfectly golden surgical outcome, you're usually looking at about a year, if not two years, to fully recover and allow those bones to regrow and fuse into one to allow the soft tissues to regenerate. It's not an easy feat. And if you're younger or you're very active, uh, like myself, that's a pretty big break from being able to live your life. Every single person who has spinal fusion surgery is now permanently at risk for adjacent segment disease. Wherever your fusion took place, where you have a mega bone, every level above that is now receiving an unusual amount of force, which causes unusual amounts of strain and pressure to those surrounding discs which essentially means when you get a spinal fusion, you're going to cause more degeneration up or down the spine. And how do they solve it? With more spinal fusion. That's like a multi-level marketing campaign. If you have a slip of your vertebra, like myself suffering from spondylolisthesis, 
Generally speaking, this surgery does not correct that slip. It might reduce it a little bit, but generally the goal is, all right, let's just arrest it in place where it is so that it can't get any worse. But to me, I have to be critical of this because that fundamentally seems like a failure. The issue of people's slipped vertebra is the slippage of the vertebra, which causes compression of the nerves. If you're watching this because you may be a candidate for spinal fusion, I would encourage you to stay tuned because there's a lot of alternatives to treat these degenerative conditions that don't pose these same risks. And I know this because I live with one of these conditions and currently I am actually halfway corrected in a simple matter of weeks with no surgery and utterly non-invasive techniques. And if you don't believe me, I've been documenting the whole thing. You can check it out on the Spondy Vlogs literally right here. Um, I'm super excited for the future of regenerative medicine and non-surgical options because I think even the orthopedic surgeons that I've spoken with realize that fundamentally this is a flawed approach. I think in certain cases such as extreme accidents, major injuries, acute problems where everything is just broken apart, it makes sense to look at spinal fusion because it is useful but it's limited. And I think the point is as medicine continues to advance and more, more attention is turned to alternative treatments, uh, I think we're going to see, probably within the next few decades, a complete change of the course of treatment and folks actually experiencing non-surgical methods as the first route of addressing these conditions.